Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Do You Know Drones podcast. I am here with the CEO of Air Agility, Pramod Raheja. I am so happy to have him on the podcast today. Uh, Pramod, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, nice to be here. I appreciate it. I'm so happy that you're here. Uh, we have Commercial UAV Expo coming up very shortly. We're both going. I have some questions on this topic related to making drones smart. Man, I, drones are already pretty smart, but the combination of drones and AI and pushing it to the edge, that's something that I believe is what's coming next. Air Agility sort of on the nexus of that, looking to go that forward. Tell us a little bit more about your your journey so far, like what inspired Air Agility and a little bit about your background. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my background has to, happens to be quite a bit of uh, aerospace background. So uh, aerospace engineer by degree, by passion, make you know had uh, model airplanes and pictures of anything that could fly probably on my wall since as long as I can remember as a kid. Um, pictures of astronauts as my heroes, uh, fighter jets, uh, lunar lander, you name it. Everything was on my wall. Uh, and my parents will tell you, yeah, the wall was plastered. So I didn't have pictures of, you know, uh, beautiful models. I mean, there were beautiful models of airplanes is what they were. And so, um, so that's, you know, so then, you know, obviously, you know, went into uh, aerospace engineering, as I mentioned, uh, got into commercial flying, also have uh, um, a lot of experience uh, in, in manned flight. And um, to fast forward, um, over the last 25 years, I've, I've become a serial, entre serial entrepreneur, I should say. And um, co-founded Air Agility with my partner about five years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, we've, we've been on a mission to do some of the things that you just started or alluded to, to talk about here, which I'm excited to de delve into. That's awesome. I'm excited too. And your background is very impressive. I have many friends that have went the, the way of the airlines and uh, I had the same stuff on my walls for sure. Um, you know, it, it got me to want to, I would like growing up, I want to be an astronaut, right? Kind of like what all, maybe not what all kids wanted to do, some firefighters and, you know, things like that. But we're now in this era where there are careers that didn't even exist when we were kids. And I'm excited for, for our children to, there's going to be careers that don't exist now that'll exist then. And I'm, that's just really what I'm excited about. So let's just dive right into the questions, dive right in. So drones and AI, they're really sort of advancing at a rapid pace, each one individually. So, but how is the combination of drones and AI powered new uh, platforms and use cases in your opinion? Yeah. Um, so when it comes to new use cases is what your question is. Um, I mean, we, I don't think have actually scratched the surface of, of, of use cases. I think that um, there's still, you know, we're still in the infancy of, of what we're doing here. So drones have been around for a little while. And when I talk to my friends or somebody that I run into a party that says, oh, you do drones. Oh, did you see that, you know, uh, that light show on the Super Bowl halftime or what have you? Um, you know, that's all great. And, and, and there's some amazing things happening with swarms and things like that. And, but not to get into any kind of rabbit hole right now, I think that the use cases are, are just really starting to develop, that we're in the early innings of how we use artificial intelligence and autonomy with drones. And um, where this really, where the rubber really meets the road is, are we able to use this technology and um, have it be better than what we're doing now, the status quo, or is it enhancing in some sort of way that makes it um, desirable? Um, and then, you know, that you're going to always fall back to the age old argument uh, from a business perspective. You know, is there a savings here? Am I am I able to do more with less? Am I able to save time or man hours, depending on what the metrics, you know, the key performance metrics that an organization uses? If we look at it from a commercialist perspective, um, it's going to be one thing. And if we look at it, say, from a government or, or a DOD perspective, it's going to be a different performance metric. So I think that those performance metrics also drive some of the use cases because what ends up happening is it's a circle. You know, you say, hey, let me let me show you what I can do with my drone. And then somebody says, oh, but you, can you do that too? Right. So it's kind of becomes a circle. And then whether we can do that too or not now is a, something to drive towards. But only if it makes sense to drive towards that. Uh, great answer. Um, and I always say the same thing going back to the beginning of your your answer. I always tell everyone that, A, I get the same questions. You're like, oh, wow, you're in drones. Cool. So when am I going to start getting packages at my door? What, what's Amazon doing? And it's really funny to me because I always like to note that 
they're kind of late to the game. <laughs> They've been doing yeah. this for a while, but they're kind of late to the game. Um, so I, I always like to say people because they're it's like Amazon. They're they're the ones who are doing drone delivery. I'm like, well, yes and no. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> but I also tell them that that the industry we're at one percent. The whole industry we're at one percent. We have so much room for growth left to go, and. We're sort of at the at the point where several of the vertical markets within that, that the drone industry serves, which is a lot of them, almost anything. It's kind of like some a remote sensing GIS guy, previously astronautical engineering. So I was an aerospace dude, geek, just just like you. Um, and it's just interesting to see like sort of where all of it is is going, right? It's like sort of the Dunning Kruger effect. Have you have you heard of that? Yeah. Where it's like we got to be really really stupid before we can get smart again. Yeah there's bits and pieces of the industry that have really done that already where it's like, you know what? We've been stupid and now we've crashed and now we're going to get smart again in a different trajectory in a different way that actually is adding value and not just cool drone. Let's go do something. Right. So, that's what's something that that's, what's interesting and fascinating and exciting for me. So another question. So you could have went almost anywhere with, with air agility, right? Because the breadth of the drone industry is so wide. Why invest in autonomy and AI? Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, this goes, this, this, this is a whole story in itself. Um, and so in uh, 2017, shortly after starting the company, which when we were still very early on and figuring things out, we had IP that was around uh, vertical takeoff and landing hybrid type of platform, meaning I could take off and land vertically anywhere, but also fly like a fixed wing. So it gives me range and endurance that maybe a typical the quad cannot give me and so a lot of excitement around this um this this sort of uh intellectual property we have got five issued patents now on 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 this sort of thing and associated um designs and and utilities and things like that but i went to a meeting downtown dc um consumer telecom industry association and everybody was there amazon you name it i was there verizon uh at t all the big telcos were there i think i was maybe the only tiny little startup in the room so uh, nobody really paid attention to me, but, you know, it was a good place to kind of, you know, sort of see what was going on. And NASA Ames happened to be there that day. And they did a whole presentation around um, how in two, by 2021, we're going to have drones flying around and incorporated into the national airspace system. Um, you know, the system for drones is called the unmanned traffic management system. And the idea is that these two things will integrate and we'll have rules and other things. And, and this has started, by the way, it's, it's, it's on its way, but it's nowhere near being mature. Right. So um, so I kind of at that moment in time now, five years ago, sort of thought to myself, gosh, I, that's that's a that's aggressive. I just don't see that happening. And um, so 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 at that moment in time, almost identically at that moment in time, we were identifying some opportunities being an early stage company. We had to, we had to identify opportunities that had R&D type implications or funding for us. And DHS had a program that was centered around smart cities and they were looking for solutions for public safety. And drones were a piece of that. So out of about 200 companies, we were selected uh, amongst two entities to be part of this program to develop autonomous technology that could be used in GPS denied environments, meaning buildings and cities where you have big buildings and you flying around. You don't have, you know, maybe a satellite signal to give you a proper GPS reading. And so this was something that was new to us. And we decided you know, from a, we did a strategy exercise within the company. We call it Blue Ocean, which you've probably read the book, and some of our listeners may have heard of this strategy. And it's really, as a company, which which direction do I go? Do I do I go and do where every, what everybody else is doing? And in our case, we were looking at delivering logistics and and you know having a vehicle that could fly around and deliver things. And we we saw a lot of risk there. We did our own you know sort of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis, and saw that this was going to have a lot of regulatory risk with the FAA. And things like that so we thought okay indoors the fa is not indoors they don't regulate indoors so and and there is there seems to be a problem here and we also thought to ourselves if we can do this this is not an easy problem to solve but if we can do this and we can build autonomous smart technology that can fly anywhere we're going to be one of a handful of companies in the world when we come out of this that we can do this so fast forward four years later and now literally i have been around the world and seeing what's out there we are in in the top tier or top echelon of companies that are doing that have the technology capability to do very intelligent, high level of autonomy flight. Um, and and if we if you're coming to Commercial UAV Expo, um, we'll be able to share more of that with you. <laughs> so. That's awesome. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. And we'll, and we'll invite as we go along. So if if you're if you're coming to Commercial UAV Expo, 
definitely come by and see uh, promote absolutely the air agility booth here and we'll talk about that sort of more to later but I've got, I've got an interesting question so and this one might be a little controversial you're gonna add a little bit of a little spice to it so sure. <laughs> for me so if i'm if pick another vertical market utilities space or almost anything where they're using instead of a, sl a subset of artificial intelligence machine learning computer vision to instead of navigate but now to analyze and annotate information now that has been sort of pitched by big players to the utility industry for years so much so and and their messaging's just not right like it just seems to not be right they're not solving the right problem it's not fully integrated it's not flexible enough it's not something there's there's missing pieces there and gaps and opportunities for sure now i've actually been in meetings where someone a salesperson may have mentioned ai or a subset computer vision machine learning whatever have you and the executive the customer the prospect will stop the meeting and i've seen them do it violently like get up and leave when they mentioned ai now that seems to be pretty polarizing to me right that seems to be pretty polarizing i would love to get why do you think this is such a polarizing topic well, um, I do. So I, I probably have a few opinions on this and they're, they're different. Uh, one of them would be that AI is such a big buzzword these days in terms of um, how it's how the word is used or the, how the how the terminology is used. And what I mean by that is that it gets thrown around quite a bit and people don't even understand what it exactly means. And um, it, it is such a you know artificial intelligence uh, is a big umbrella. And underneath that umbrella is a lot of, of, of different facets and characteristics and again going back to what we were discussing earlier about the industry and we're here we're talking about drones of course the drone industry being in you know the first inning or the very early stages early innings um i also think ai is with that too because you have you can have different types of ai you know so um i think that most people when i when i describe ai so going you know getting out of the the the, the, the meetings that you were describing and just talking to an average layperson um, they, they, when I describe to them what I do, what, what Air Agility does, uh, what we do, they start to think, they start to make analogies in their mind. And one of the analogies that's always, that always comes up, almost guaranteed, is um, Terminator. So if we go back to the Arnold Schwarzenegger movies and they say, you know, oh, it's smart, like, you know, Terminator. And well, not exactly, but, you know, that's, that's you know, it's such a high level of AI that we're not even anywhere close to that, right? So going back to your meetings and circling back as to why I think people are leaving the room there, I think that the approach potentially is that um, here. So if you really need to understand what your customer needs, you need to understand their problem and their pain point. Right. And I think and I could be wrong about this, but from what you just described, it sounds like there might not have been a complete understanding of the customer's pain point and exactly the problem they're trying to solve. And instead, a high approach, a high level AI approach that was probably some huge number. Um, given and presented to that client to say, hey, uh, we can do all this for you here and here's this, you know, several million dollar budget. And 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 I I being in, you know, kind of a more of a sales personality, I have made this mistake before. You know, no, I haven't luckily nobody's slammed the table or slammed the door on me, but you know, but I have gotten that response of, well, geez, are you, you know, I don't think we could do this, right? So so you know, the learning that I've gotten in those situations is really, really, really understand what exactly is the mission that's actually trying to be accomplished and then address that specifically. And I think if that's done, I think the response is much better personally. I'll I have to 100% agree with you. I mean, so <laughs> I'm, it, it's funny because I mean, as, as an engineer and a pseudo salesperson, you know, content, thought leader, those sort of things, it's like, we get to try to view this strategically. We don't have like, we have products that we need to sell, but aligning what those products are doing as subject matter experts within this space, we have to really ingest a lot of information on, on the vertical market and our customer information that we're trying to solve a problem. So, but we're not them. We need to become them. It's like, it's, it's this process that, that like appreciative inquiry, if you've heard that before, it's like, you gotta go through that process to understand what it is. Like, let them dream with you a little bit because this is so early that what this looks like when it's starting to become more well adopted and scalable is gonna look different than it does today. And sharing that message of mark, you know, marketing message of value is, is really important, right? So really understanding and diving deep with the customer is something that I don't know, and not just bringing them one solution. It's like, look, here's everything you need. Trust me, wink, wink, nod, nod. This is everything you're ever going to need. 
That is just so not true. There's no way so one company, one person, one thought, one idea is going to solve everything. So like I said, I think the mindset is that of collaboration, of that of partnership, of that of learning, of that of experimentation and dreaming. That's really what's sort of important in this space and not the, wow, you're del- you're, you're, you know, creating Skynet and, you know, we're going to have machines, you know, killing everyone. They're like, no, 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 come on. That's, that's not what we're doing. Like, that's not at all what we're doing. And by the way, the machine can only do what I tell it to do. It's not right. speaking for itself necessarily. It has a set of rules that it has to sit, sit between. And these aren't theoretical, you know, crossing, you know, ethical rule. Like, these are like, no, do I turn this way? Do I this way? I'm sensing this. I need to do this. Like, it's not, it's not one of those things. It's really funny. Now, can it get there? Sure, man. Absolutely. No problem. But we have a long journey to get there. And I think a lot of these are going to be very niche. I like to say that there are, are, are niche, like there are riches and niches. And I think this technology can go broad, but it's going to go deep Yes, to be successful. So Correct. that's just my two cents on it. Now, so let's get theoretical. Let's get future looking. Like, I really want to get your answer on this. I'm very curious because everyone has a different one. What do you see as the future of drones and AI? Yeah, great, great question, and and I'm, I can see why there's a lot of different answers. Um, and this this answer has evolved, and will probably continue to evolve. Which is to say that I do I do see in the future, um, you know, specifically with drones and AI, uh, that that drones will be able to autonomously do a lot of tasks that humans do now. And I'll give you a few examples. One might be actually painting the side of a building, which I think, you know, there's already been some experimentation with that. It's not perfect. You've got tanks and hoses and things like that. And, and there's some complexity to it. Um, the, you know, that's one example. Another example, which, you know, is already, again, already being done to a, to a certain extent and to a certain level of autonomy, which is um, surveillance. So imagine, if you will, um, the security guard from days of old that sits in the shack and has six cameras sitting in front of them. And maybe they're a college student and they're sitting there trying to study for their exams. They're not really looking at the cameras too often unless there's a reason to, um, or they're just taking a glance every now and then, which means they're going to miss things. And um, imagine now a drone that's flying around a perimeter of a large uh, complex and is basically now tasked with you know, letting the guard know, maybe the guard's still there, but now they only need to let the guard know if they see something or something, some anomaly happens or, you know, a, a, a door is opening or something. Then they can say, oh, hey, you need to go take a look at this, right? Um, another example uh, might be um, actually, um, uh, well, not just example, but this is also happening too, is uh, inspections. And in our world, where we're hearing this, is, which is something we focus on, what we're hearing for about inspections is that, hey, We're using drones, but we're flying them manually. And what that means is I need to have a cadre of trained pilots. They're hard to get. Not sure I can make, I can justify they are, um, you know, the, the, the salaries and all these things. And I have to have a payload operator as well. And is there a way that I could reduce that, you know, that manpower and just have one operator that's both operating the payload and the, and the drone. But if I do that, then they've really got to, they've got to be skilled and they got to make sure they don't crash because if they crash, that causes problems and insurance doesn't like that, et cetera, et cetera. And um, so how do we do this? So what I see going back to your question, again, I'm kind of giving you a few examples and getting in the weeds, but what I'm really getting at is I see drones executing on a lot of tasks automatically without really a whole lot of human intervention. You know, the human is potentially in many of these cases still in the loop or on the loop, but not in the loop, if that makes sense, right? They're on the loop. They can come in and intervene if they need to, but they're not necessarily in the loop of the autonomy. And so you're saving a ton of time, a ton of effort. Um, and um, and then being able to identify these anomalies on the edge is also, I think, part of the future. And an example would be a bridge that collapsed uh, about a year, year and a half ago. It was There's been a lot of bridges that have had problems, but this one I think that I'm thinking of is in Arkansas. And prior to it collapsing, they had hired an engineering firm and they had somebody fly a drone around the bridge and then they had to take that data and then they had to go post-process it, meaning they had to go look at the video and see if they saw any anomalies. That's pretty taxing on any human. I don't know that I want to sit through watching five hours of video. Well, guess what? Whoever was doing that did miss something and the bridge collapsed. So when they went back and did the investigation, they said, oh, you guys actually, you know, did an assessment, but somehow this anomaly, whatever it was, it was a crack or something was missed in the you know, in the, in the, in the analysis. So now again, imagine a more autonomous drone that has an AI layer on board that says, I am looking, I, the drone that's sort of smart, am looking for three or four big anomalies that could cause, you know, a short term problem. I'm going to make sure I point that out now, real time on the edge to my operator versus, 
having them have to go look through, you know, and, and look through tons of data, right, and and find that needle in the haystack. Um, and so that that's that's another example. So I gave you three examples there, um, but that's what I see. I see in general drones being used in all kinds of environments, but now much more autonomously. Again, not necessarily taking the human away, but putting them more on the loop versus in the loop and being a team member versus telling the drone exactly what to do and when to do it. I like it. It's it's using the drone as, as a tool, right? It's not, yeah. it doesn't replace the person. It is a tool that the operator now has to make them more effective, right? To Absolutely. remove some of the errors, remove some of the time, remove some of the effort. I mean, it's just making jobs easier. Like that's the thing that I try to explain is most people yeah. like, oh, you're just taking jobs away. It's like, no, we're not. We're right. making that person more efficient, more effective, more time. Like they can do more in a day because they have this tool. Right. If they were just given a rock and said, go build that house, it probably wouldn't even get done. But if you give them all of the tools and all of the materials and all of the training and all of the things, they can actually get it done. Like that job can get accomplished. Drones are just another tool. I like to say that so many times. I even throw in, it's becoming a tagline, they're, they're great flying ham sandwiches that have really can have sophisticated sensors that make people's jobs easier. But the flying ham sandwich by itself, we have found success in this industry when it disappears. Right. It disappears. It's kind of like RFID or GPS or like, oh, wow, how am I navigating with this thing? Oh, this crazy constellation of amazing physics and technology that's zooming above our heads at 19,000 miles an hour. Like, people don't talk about it anymore, but it's it's there. Like, I just watched something on Netflix around this. It was called, the, I think it was called the G word. And they, they went into the GPS, they went to the second separate, second operations, space operations squadron here in uh, Schriever Air Force Base in Colorado. Man, it's a bunch of kids, like 10 people controlling <laughs> GPS for the world. Like, yeah. When drones get there, we win, man. Like, that's it. Like, when it's a, it's a group of 10 people that's controlling the autonomy of an entire industry of drones. That is the win. That is what I see as the future of this industry because we've done all the legwork, we've done all of the homework, we've done all of the collaborations and partnerships and research, and it can always get better, just like GPS, constantly getting better. This can always get better, but it starts to disappear. Like right. That's when we. That's when we really win, man. But we don't want to disappear. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> We're going to Commercial UAV Expo. Uh, tell us where where the listeners can, if they're going, where they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. I will be absolutely probably floating around all over the place, but most of the time you're going to find me at booth 654, which is uh, the Kerasoft booth. That they're, our, they're our government reseller partner, and so we're going to be hanging out with them at booth 654. Um, so you'll find me there, and uh, you might find me at one of the bars afterwards in the at night just hanging out. So happy to have conversations at the booth or the bar. Booth of the bar. I like it. That's fantastic. You, you need to have like the shirt that says, follow me to the booth or follow me to the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe one in the front, one in the back. I don't know. I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what, what Maryland grads, what, what kind of, what, what they do. So <laughs> well, man, promote, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I look forward to meeting you in person at the commercial UAB expo and continuing this conversation and everyone, everyone that's listening and everyone that wants to see this. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, your input and your questions and, and just being inquisitive about this industry and asking those questions. That's what we're all about here and just sharing that in a fun, accessible and sort of hopefully entertaining way. So if you found this entertaining, please feel free to subscribe, smash that like button, hit the notification bell when we drop new stuff. And we will definitely be podcasting live and blogging. I guess that's what their kids are calling it these days, live from the commercial UAB Expo. And we're going to be having a good time. So hopefully we'll run into promote there. And until then, have a great day and fly safe.